WGN TV Political Report. I'm Paul Lisnick. We begin this week with the COVID-19 pandemic. On Wednesday, President Joe Biden will come to Chicago to highlight the success of vaccine mandates. Experts say convincing more people to get their shots is the only way to end the pandemic once and for all. The U.S. has now doubled its purchase of vaccine doses to send to low and middle income countries around the globe with the hope of stopping the spread overseas and stopping new variants from hitting American shores. Illinois Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy has been working on the issue for months, and I spoke with the 8th District Democrat about his efforts and more. So we heard towards the end of the week, President Biden coming to Chicago for the first time to the city since he's been president. Uh, it, we know it's going to deal with vaccines. You're active in that. What can you tell us that we don't know? Well, I think that uh, it's good that the president is upping our pledge of donations uh, of vaccines to the rest of the world. But unfortunately, it's not enough. Um, unfortunately, uh, right now, uh, the COVID fires are raging overseas. And uh, what we know is that although in the United States, we obviously have 70% of our people who are eligible to be vaccinated uh, actually getting their first shots, in many parts of the world, they haven't anywhere close to that percentage. In many parts of Africa, for instance, they're still only at 2 or 3% of their populations getting vaccinated. Now, the reason why we should vaccinate them is because it's the right thing to do, but it's also the smart thing to do to prevent those variants from coming over here and wreaking more havoc with our help and our economy. Um, I've introduced legislation called the NOVID Act. It's a play on words, no more COVID. And it uh, has gotten a lot of attention and a lot of support. 116 of my colleagues have asked for it to be included in the reconciliation process. So I'm very hopeful. So... You know, the, the president's been talking about us donating millions of vaccines, buying them, giving them to the rest of the world. Um, you've made comments where you're saying we need to be talking billions, not millions, and we can't wait six months. So under the Krishnamurthy plan, what do we need and how fast do we need it? I think within the next year, we need to vaccinate 60 percent of the population of the world's 92 poorest countries. Um, and if we don't do it, the scientists are very clear, which is that those variants that are being generated in the world petri dish are going to make their ways on make their way on shore and defeat our vaccine so regardless of how many people we get vaccinated here with our vaccines they'll be useless if a variant comes over and basically defeats them so that's why we have to deal with this international problem urgently now paul we've done this in the past with other um uh I guess, pandemics or epidemics, including the HIV AIDS uh, problem in Africa uh, through the PEPFAR program. Uh, we led on that issue and we have to spearhead leadership here as well. How do we know that when these shots get overseas that there is staffing to put shots in arms and that they don't meet resistance? I mean, what do we do about that? Well, part of the uh, uh, funding that we are calling for would actually go toward that end-to-end -end delivery system that we desperately need. We don't want to just drop off a bunch of vaccines at the airport. We want to make sure they get into people's arms. So that means working with local NGOs, looking, working with local governments. I guarantee you, Paul, the issue is not vaccine resistance overseas. Rather, it's desperation for trying to get a vaccine because there just isn't any overseas. And and, and, and we need to address this right now. Well, here at home, of course, the FDA is it's finally saying it's okay, people 65 and older, those with comorbidities. But that has to be frustrating to folks, I'm guessing like you, who probably would like to see an approval for a booster shot. I think I said okay vaccines and okay to the booster shots. Uh, pretty much for the general population. Um, I'll follow the scientists on this. I'll follow their lead. Uh, uh, it looks like uh, the advisory committee to the FDA said, let's start with the seniors which makes sense. Let's start with healthcare workers and others who are at heightened risk, as well as people who are maybe compromised in terms of their you know, immune system. Um, and then we can get to the rest of the population. But I do think that uh, having a booster shot in principle makes sense. In Israel, they conducted a very interesting study, Paul, that we often uh, look to, um, which showed that unfortunately, over time, uh, the effectiveness of the vaccines does wane. It goes down. And so we're going to need to have some kind of booster um, to address that and probably new variants on the horizon if we don't address the problem of variants being generated abroad.
Um, let me turn to some other things that you all have to deal with. It's not like there's a, a lot going on in Washington, but obviously you've got um, this effort. The House is, has, has funded the budget uh, until December to avoid a catastrophe there. Uh, the debt ceiling, you guys are raising the debt ceiling. You know there's problems ahead with the Senate, but one of the ways we can already see what's coming is not one Republican voted for you, uh, with you, on the budget or on raising the debt ceiling. I'm curious as to your response to that. What do you think happens? And why is it that Democrats, who went along several times in the Trump administration to raise the debt ceiling, always wanted to go along to get along, they just don't ever play tough? And Republicans, man, they know how to play tough. Um, you know, I think that we have to do the right thing. Um, the way I look at it, Paul, is raising the debt ceiling is like paying your bill after you have uh, ordered the food and enjoyed it and had a delicious meal at a restaurant. You know, not paying that bill is dining and dashing. And we would be engaging in a national episode of dining and dashing uh, if we did not raise the death ceiling. Not to mention the fact that we would put the full faith and credit of the United States at risk. And as Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan Chase said the other day, we'd be setting us back 100 years because most of the world believes that the United States pays its debts when they're due. Now, uh, I do think that this needs to be a bipartisan exercise. I'm hopeful that Republicans will come to their senses in the Senate. If they don't, uh, we're going to have to include it in some other uh, must-pass legislation that they'll have to go along with, or we're going to have to do it on our own. Well, one of the things Republicans like Mitch McConnell are saying, by the way, is, hey, this is the Democrats' debt. That's why you need to you need to, to take this action, Mitch says, but you own the debt. My understanding in looking at numbers, actually, aren't we still, isn't that debt still a reflection of, of debt accrued in the Trump administration? That's right. It's, it's, it's debt. The way to think about it, Paul, is that it's the incremental debt that was racked up basically for the last year. And for much of that last year, Donald Trump was the president. And so, um, you know, this debt was incurred to pay for um, pandemic-related expenses. It was CARES debt and so forth. And so let's do the right thing. Let's raise the debt ceiling. Let's pay our bills. What is your sense? Does the Biden agenda go down because progressive Democrats say, we told you we were going to do this and you didn't believe us? I don't think so. I think that um, I'm very hopeful that my colleagues and friends uh, in all wings of the party are going to recognize that uh, we need to get this infrastructure deal done. We need to get the reconciliation package done. We have to have a little bit of faith in each other that there's a process and that we need to see the process through. Because as Nancy Pelosi said the other day, we're, we either need to hang together and get this stuff done, or we're going to hang alone because we're not going to have anything to show for the time that we spent in Congress and that we promised to deliver. So let's put the rhetoric aside for a few minutes and let's get this stuff done. The American people want some wins now, and, and I, I'm, I'm very confident we can deliver them. Uh, yeah, the Democrats want to deliver wins, but we, we see that the voting rights thing seems to be going nowhere. DACA, which uh, the, the Senate parliamentarian has said, sorry, that has nothing to do with budget, so you can't pass that on 50 votes. Are those things just going downhill? Not necessarily. So um, uh, with regard to DACA and immigration issues, including um, uh, essential workers, TPS, uh, as well as H-1B folks, uh, the green card backlog, um, we are going to be uh, ushering forward another argument to the Senate parliamentarian in, in the coming days. And I'm hopeful that that will have, uh, that will be a successful argument. Um, Paul, this is something that is more than an incidental budgetary impact. This has a tremendous budgetary impact and it's positive. You know this. Everyone watching knows that we are a nation of laws, but a nation of immigrants. And our um, uh, economic prosperity depends on it. And so we got to get this done. 